Hello, hello, okay. So this is my attempt to read the Ordinal of Alchemy, chapter one anyway, uh, written by Thomas Norton in AD, in the year 1477, it was published. I have a print copy of it in this Theatricum Chemicum Britannicum. Uh, it's by Kessinger's Legacy Reprints. I got it on Amazon. I thought it was going to be a photographic reproduction, or uh, what do you call it, facsimile, but it's an OCR uh, reproduction, which kind of, it still works pretty well, and it's easy to read from the Order Null of Alchemy. Okay, now, I may read it partially out of this because... I'm trying to get used to reading it off the page, the printed page, and not to depend on the print or the screen copy. But I'd like to try to also read it from the screen. So let's try that. So this is the Ordinal of Alchemy. This book the greatest clerics may teach, but shorteneth the vulgar reach. A book that gets, by wealth, renown, and boggles at a threadbare gown, a trusty book of faithful things, instructing priests, advising kings, a book that's fitted for the sense of man who lives without offense, a book of secrets given by God to men elect a beaten trod, availing such as constant be in faith and hope and trusting me, good men and bad even numberless, the latter, but without success, desire the art, but still, alas, they are so given to avarice, that of a million hardly three were e'er ordained for alchemy. Yet many called every hour, learned and unlearned, rich and poor, who will neither tend nor take the pains, and therefore trudge without the gains, on whom God doth this art bestow, her sons may herein fully know. By these four lines may ye believe. Heaven doth all things gratis give. This art in such you only find, as justice love, with spotless mind. But tis denied to guileful men, for sin protracts the gifts of heaven. These had adorned the English throne if they had trusted God alone. For he that hereby honor wins shall change the old for better things. And when he comes to rule the land, reform it with a virtuous hand, leaving examples of good deeds to every king that him succeeds. Then shall the people jubilize in mutual love and sacrifice praises to God. O king that shall these works implore the God of all for timely help in this good thing. So to a just and glorious king, most goodly graces shall descend when least looked for to crown his end. And thus we begin with chapter, we begin with the proham. That's uh, the pre, um, preface. Now, some of these words I know, I've, I've looked them up. I may interrupt my reading just so that I can, just so that I may interrupt the reading so I can describe what the words mean if I say them in the right, in the proper words, in this proper spelling, and if I pronounce them according to their spelling on the screen, which there's a newer version than in Old English or Middle English. Okay. Okay. So, the proham. To the honor of God, one in persons three, this book is made that laymen should it see, and clerks also, after my decease, whereby all laymen which putteth them in priests, to seek... Priests is uh, pressed. 
it looks like priests. In fact, I'm going to zoom in on the words so that it's easier to so it's easier easier to read. Uh, view single page continuous scroll. Uh, priests, that actually means press, subjugate, oppress. So it's like oppress. It's like an older version of oppress. Whereby all laymen which putteth them in oppression. Putteth them in press. Uh, to the honor of God, one in person three, this book is made, that laymen should it see. And clerics also, after my decease. Whereby all laymen which putteth them in priests. To seek by alchemy great riches to win, may find good counsel ere such work they begin, and great deceits they may hereby eschew, and by this doctrine no false men from true. Natheless clerks, I'll just point that out, natheless means nevertheless. Natheless clerks, great secrets here may leer, but all laymen shall find here cause to fear and to beware of false illusions which multipliers work with their conclusions but for that i desire not worth worldly fame but your good prayers unknown shall be my name that no man should thereafter search nay look but wisely consider the flowers of this book of every estate that is within mankind, if ye make search, much people ye may find, which to alchemy their courage do address, only for appetite of lucre and riches, as popes with cardinals of dignity, as popes with cardinals of dignity, bishops with bishop, archbishops with bishops of high degree, with abbots and priors of religion with friars and heremites and priests many one, and kings with princes and lords great of blood, for every estate desire after good, desireth after good. And merchants also which dwell in the fire of brenning covetous have thereto desire. Brenning means burning. It's uh, Brenning is associated with water. Brenning water is alcohol. Burning covetous of brenning covetous have thereto desire and common workmen will not be out left for as well as lords they love this noble craft as goldsmiths whom we should left left reprieve for sights in their craft moveth them to believe maveth means moveth like move moves them for sights in their craft moves them to believe but wonder it is that weavers deal with such works, Freemasons and tanners with poor parish clerks, tailors and glaziers will not thereof cease, and eke silly tinkers will put them in the priests. Uh, silly means spiritually favored, holy virtuous. Mm, reading back. For sights in their craft, moving them to believe. But wonder it is that weavers deal with such works. Freemasons and tanners with poor parish clerks. Tailors and glaziers will not thereof cease. And eke silly tankers will put them in the priests. With great presumption. But yet some color there was. For all such men as give tincture to glass. But many artificers have been over swift with hasty credence to fume away their thrift. And albeit that losses made them to smart, yet ever in hope continued their heart, trusting some time to speed right well. Of many such truly I can tell, which in such hope continued all their life, whereby they were poor and made to unthrive. It had been good for them to have left off in season for naught they found but a scoff. For truly he that is not a great clerk is nace and lewd to meddle with his work, 
You may trust me well, it is no small engine to know all secrets pertaining to the mind. For it is most profound philosophy, the subtle science of holy alchemy, of which science here I intend to write, howbeit I may not curiously indict. In gin is wit, diverse, uh, direct device, intelligence, talent. So that is uh, the phrasing is, For truly he that is not a great clerk is nice and lewd to meddle with his work. Ye may trust me well, that is no small wit in gin, to know all, no small intelligence, to know all secrets pertaining to the mind. For it is most profound philosophy, the science, subtle science of holy alchemy, of which science here I intend to write, how be it, I may not curiously indict. For he that should all a common people teach, he must for them use plain and common speech. Though that I write in plain and homely wise, no good man then should such writing despise. All masters that write of this solemn work, they made their books to many men, to many men full dirk. Now, dirk means dark. They made their books to many men full dark in po poises, parables, and in metaphors also, which to, sc to shoulders, uh, causes pain and woe for in their practice when they would it assay they less they lease their crap costs as men see all day as men see all day hermes rassus geber and avison merlin hortolan democrit and morian bacon and raymond with others many more, war, wrote under covert, and Aristotle also. For what hereof they wrote with their pen, their cloudy clauses dulled many men. For from laymen, from clerks, and fo so from every man, they hid this art, that no man find it can. By their books do they show reasons fair, whereby much people are brought into despair. Yet Anaxagoras wrote plainest of all of them all in his book of conversations, conversions natural, of the old fathers that ever I found he most disclosed of this science the ground, whereof Aristotle had great envy, and him rebuked unrightfully, in many places as I can well report, intending that men to him should not resort. For he was large of his cunning and love. God have his soul in bliss with him above. And such as, show, as sowed envious seed, God forgave them their misdeed. As the monk which a book did write, Of a thousand receipts in malice for despite, Which be copied in many a place, Whereby hath been made Pale many a face, and many gowns have been made bare of hue, and men made false, which before time were true. Wherefore my pity doth me uh, constrain to show the truth in few words and plain, so that you may from false doctrine flee, if ye give credence to this book and me. Avoid your books written of receipts. For all such receipts are full of deceits. Just not such receipts, and learn well this clause. Nothing is wrought but by his proper cause. Wherefore that practice falleth far behind, where knowledge of the cause is not in mind. Therefore remember ever more wisely that you work nothing but you know how and why. Mind, why, cause. 
wisely. Therefore remember ever more wisely that you work nothing but you know how and why. Also he that would in this art proceed to eschew falsehood he hath great need. For truth is good which this art must guide, wherefore to falsehood you may never slide, but steadfastly your mind must be set. False colored metal never to counterfeit. As they that seek blanchers and citronations, which will not abide all examinations, wherewith false plate they make as they can, or money to beguile some good true man. But God has not, but God has made that of his blessed art of this, but God has made that of this blessed art, all that be false shall have thereof no part. He must have grace that would for this art sue. Therefore of right him needeth to be true. Also he may not be troubled in his mind with outward charges which this art would find. And he that would have his intent, and he that would have his intent, he must have riches sufficient. In many ways he may not look but only pursue the order of this book, named of alchemy the ordinal, the creed mihi, creed mihi, the standard perpetual. I did not look up mihi. For like as the ordinal to priests set out, the service of the days as they go about, so of all the books unordered in alchemy, the effect is here set out orderly. Therefore, this book, to alchemister wise, to an alchemister wise, is a book of incomparable price, whose truth shall never be defiled, though it appear in homely wise compiled. And as I had this art by grace from heaven, I give you the same here in chapter seven. As largely as by my fealty I may, by license of the dreadful judge at doomsday. The first chapter shall all men teach, what manner people may this science teach, reach, and why the true science of alchemy is of old fathers called blessed and holy. In the second chapter may be fine, may be sane, the nice joys thereof, with the great pain. Third chapter, for the love of one, shall truly disclose the matters of our stone, which the Arabis Dun Elixir call, whereof it is, there understand you shall. The fourth chapter teaches the gross work, the, a foul laborer, not kindly for a clerk, in which is found full great travail, with many perils, and many a fail. The fifth chapter is of the subtle work, which God ordained only for a clerk. Full, full few clerks can it comprehend, therefore to a few men is the science sent. The sixth chapter is of concord and love between low natures and heavenly spheres above, whereof true knowledge advances great clerks and causes furtherance in our wonderful works. The seventh chapter, truly teach ye shall, the doubtful regiments of your fires all. Sorry. <coughs> now, sovereign Lord God, me guide and speed. Now, sovereign Lord God, me guide and speed for to my matters, as now I will proceed, praying all men which this book shall find. With devout prayers to have my soul in mind, and that no man for better, nay for worse, change my writing for dread of God's curse. For where quick sentence shall seem not to be, there may wise men find salcus privity. And changing of some one syllable may make this book unprofitable. Therefore trust not to one reading, 
or twain, but twenty times it would be over sane. For it containeth full ponderous sentence, albeit that it's that it felt form of eloquence. But the best thing that ye do shall, as to my as to read many books, and then this withal. Thus begins chapter 1. We have a plate here. Alchemy, secret, uh, secret, science, alchemy, uh, fic, uh, secret, serbia, SCP, donum, yep. Thus begins Norton's Ordinal, Chapter 1. Maestriful, marvelous, and alchemistry, archimistry, uh, alch yes, maestriful, marvelous, and archimistry is the tincture of holy alchemy, a wonderful science, secret philosophy, a singular grace and gift of the Almighty, which never was found by labor of man, but it by teaching or revelation began. It was never for money sold and bought by any man which for it has sought, but given to an able man by grace, wrought with great cost, with long laser and space. Long leisure in space. That lays that lafer's looking word is leisure, leisure. Wrought with great cost and with long leisure in space, it helpeth a man when he hath need. It voideth vain glory, hope, and also dread. It voideth ambitiousness, extortion, and excess. It fences adversity that she doth do not, that she do not oppress. He. I'm going to read that again, the rhyme. It voideth vainglory, hope, and also dread. It voideth ambitiousness, extortion, and excess. Wait. It helpeth man when he hath need. It voideth vainglory, hope, and also dread. Read, dread. Bad rhyme, difficult rhyme. It voideth ambitiousness, extortion, and excess. It fences... It fenceth adversity that she do not oppress. He that thereof hath his full intent, forsaketh extremities with measure is content. Some people would not have it called holy. Some people would not have it called holy, and in this wise they do reply. They say how panems may this art have, such as our Lord God will never have. Will Pardon me. They say how Panems, Panems being pagans, they say how Panems may this art have, such as our Lord God will never save, for their willful false infidelity, the cause of goodness possessors cannot be. Also it maketh none other thing but gold or silver for money cup or ring, which of wise men is proved and well found, least virtuous thing that is upon the ground. Wherefore, concluding all men of that sect, say how this science is not, science nis holy in effect. To this we say, and witness as we can, how that this science was never taught to man. But he were proved perfectly with space. Whether he were able to receive this, this grace, for his truth, virtue, and for his stable wit, which if he fault, he shall never have it. Also no man could yet this science reach, but if God send a master him to teach. For it is so wonderful and so so cuth that it must needs be taught from mouth to mouth. Also he must, be he never full, so loath, receive it with a most 
sacred dreadful oath, that as we refuse great dignity and fame, so he must needly refuse the same, and also that he shall not be so wild to teach this secret to his own child, for nighness of blood ne consanguinity may not accepted be to this dignity, so blood as blood may have here of no part, but only virtue winneth this holy art. Therefore straightly you shall search and see all manner of virtues with the ability of the person which shall this science leer, and in likewise make him straight, straight lie swear, so that no man shall leave this art behind, but he an able and approved man can find. When age shall grieve him to ride or go, one he may teach, but then never no more. For this science must ever secret be, the cause whereof is this as you may see. If one evil man had hereof all his will, all Christian peace he might hastily spill, and with his pride he might pull down rightful kings and princes of renown, Wherefore the sentence of peril and jeopardy upon the teacher resteth, resteth dreadfully. So then for doubt of such pride and wretch he must beware that will the science teach. No man therefore may reach this great present but he that hath virtues excellent. So though men ween Possessors not to aid. Ween is think or thought. So though men ween possessors not to aid, not to hollow the sciences before is as before is said, neither see, neither seem not blessed effectually, yet in her order the science is holy. And for as much as no man may her find but only by grace she is holy of her kind. Also it is a work of and cure divine. Foul copper to make gold or silver fine, no man may find such chance change by his thought of diverse kinds which God's hands have wrought. For God's conjunctions man may not undo, but if his grace fully consent thereto. By help of this science which our Lord above hath given to such men as he doth love. Wherefore old fathers conveniently called this science holy alchemy. Therefore no man should be too swift to cast away our Lord's blessed gift, considering how that, that almighty God from great doctors hath this science forebode and granted it to few men of his mercy, such as be faithful, true, and lowly. And as there be but planets seven, among the multitude of stars in heaven, so among millions and millions of mankind, scarcely seven men may the science find. Wherefore, laymen, ye may leer and see how many doctors of great authority with many searchers hath this science sought, yet all their labors have turned into naught. If they did cost, yet found they none avail, for of their purpose every time they fail, and in despair their reaction, their reason, and in despair they reason and depart. And depart. Let's read that again. If they did cost, yet found they none avail, for of their purpose every time they fail, and in despair they reason and depart. And then they said how there is no such art, but feigned fables they name it where they go, a false, a false fond thing they say it is also, such men presume too much upon their mind. They ween, they think their wits sufficient this art to find, but of their slander and words of outrage, we take thereof truly little charge. 
for such be not invented to our feast. So, pardon me. For such be not invited to our feast, which weaneth themselves wise and can do, and can do least. Albeit such men lift, not linger to pursue. Yet is this science of alchemy full true, and albeit some proud clerks say nay, yet every wise clerk well consider may, how he which hereof may to might know true see may not hereof lawful witness be for it were a wondrous thing and quaint a man that never had fight sight to paint how should a born blind man be sure to write or make good portraiture to build pool's step might be great doubt for such proud clerics to bring about. Such might well hap to break their crown, ere they could wisely take it down. Wherefore all such are full far behind, to fetch out the secret, secretest point of kind. Therefore all men take their fortune and chance, remit such clerks to their ignorance. Now ye that will the science pursue, learn ye, to know false men from true. All true searchers of the science of alchemy must be full learned in their first philosophy. Else of else all their labor shall them let and grieve, as he that fetches water in a sieve. Let in this case in that phrase means like a hindrance. Else all their labor shall them let and grieve, as the, he that fetches water in a sieve. The true men search and seek all alone in hope to find our delectable stone, and for that they would that no man should have loss. They prove and seek all at their own cost. So their own purses they will not spare they make their coffers thereby full bare with great patience they do proceed trusting only in god to be their speed the false men walk us from town to town for the most part in a threadbare gown ever searching with diligent await to win his prey with some false deceit of swearing and leasing such will not cease Note, leasing means lying. Of swearing and leasing, such will not cease to say how they can silver plate increase. And ever they rail with perjury, saying how they can multiply gold and silver, gold and silver, and in such wise with promise they please the covetous. And causeth his mind to be on him set to be on him set, then falsehood and covetous be well met, but afterwards within a little while the multiplier doth him beguile with his fair promise, and with his false oaths the covetous is brought to threadbare clothes. But if he can hastily be well aware of the multiplier and of his chaffaire, of whole deceits much i can report but i dare not least i give comfort to such as be disposed to treachery for so much hurt much much come thereby wherefore I advise you and be wise of them which proffer such service if they had cunning have ye no doubt they will be loath to shew it out. When such men promise to multiply, they compass to do some villainy, some true, some true man's goods to be... Oh, I'm going to rewind. If they had cunning, have ye no doubt, they will be loath to show it out. When such men promise to multiply, they compass to do some villainy, some true man's goods to bear away of such fellows 
What should I say? All such false men, wherever they go, they should be punished. They be not so. Upon nature they falsely lie, for metals do not multiply. Of this sentence, all men be sure, evermore art must serve nature. Nothing multiplieth, as octors say. As octors say. Octors being authors or um, creators. Uh, pardon me, this is what page? Page 18. Octors are creators, makers, authors, founders. Nothing multiplies, as Octors says, but by one of these two ways. One, by rotting, called putrefaction. That other, as beasts, by propagation. Propagation in metals may not be, but in our stone, much like thing you may see, putrefaction must destroy and deface, but it be done in its proper place. Metals of kind grow low underground, for above earth rust in them is found. So above earth appeareth corruption of metals, and in long time destruction, whereof no cause is found in this case, but that above earth they be not in their place. Contrary places to nature causeth strife, as fishes out of water lose in their life. And man with beasts and birds live in air, but stone and minerals under earth repair. Physicians and apothecaries fought appetite and will to seek water flowers on a dry hill. Uh, fout means desire. That means want or lack. It lacks and it wants. Physicians and apothecaries fought appetite and will to seek fl water flowers on a dry hill. For God hath ordained of his wisdom and grace all things to grow in their natural place. Against this doctrine some men reply, and say that metals do multiply. For of silver, lead, tin, and also brass, some vein is more and some is less, or which diversity nature should cease, if metals do not multiply and increase. Wherefore they say that reason showeth now how that under earth they multiply and grow. Why not then above earth in vessels close and fair, such as should preserve them from fire, water, and air? Here too we say this reason is but rude, for this is no perfect similitude. For cause efficient of metals find ye shall only to be the virtue mineral which in the every which in every earth is not let's go back I'm going to go back just to catch the why not then above earth in vessels close and fair such as should preserve them from fire water and air here too we say this reason is but rude for this is no perfect similitude for cause efficient of metals find ye shall only to be the virtue mineral which in every earth is not found but in certain places of eligible ground into which places the heavenly sphere sendeth his beams directly every year and as the matters there disposed be such metals thereof formed shall ye see few grounds be apt to such generation how should then above ground be multiplication. Also all men perceive that be wise, how water congealed with cold is ice, and before time it hardened was. Some lay in more places and some in less. As water in fosses of the cartwheel, where veins where veins in mail, where veins small when they began to keel, but water and ditches made veins more for plenty of water that was therein for now for fosses is ditch a trench and 
uproar is another word that I looked up. Uh, <clears throat> for plenty of water that was therein for its... I don't remember. Let me just check that out. No, I'll just leave it. Where uh, here on hereupon to say it were no good advice that therefore of ice should multiply more ice. So though there be of metals, veins more and less, it proveth not that they increase more than it was. Also you may trust, without any doubt, if multiplying should be brought about, all the ingredients must draw to simplicity and break composition, as yearly you may see. For multiplying of herbs, how nature hath provided, that all things joined in the seed be divided. Else, else stock and leaves, which virtually therein be, may not come forth actually, that I might them see. What metal holdeth his whole composition when corrosive waters have made dissolution? Therefore, sith ice is nearer to simplicity than is metal, and may not increase to be. Truly you may trust, as I said before, how of one ounce of silver may silver be no more. Also nothing multiplied shall you find. Also, also nothing multiplied shall you find, but it be men, but it be of vegetative, vegetative, or of sensitive kind. Where metals be only elementative, having no seed, neither feeling of life. Wherefore, concluding all multipliers must cease. For metals, once metals, shall no more increase. Nevertheless, one metal transmuted we find unto a metal of another kind, for propinquity of matter that in them was, as it is known betwixt iron and brass. But to make true silver or gold is no engine, except only the philosopher's medicine. So that's like not, not intelligent. But to make true silver or gold is not intelligent. I just want to. In Jin is wit, diverse intelligence, talent, skill. It is not skill. But to make true silver or gold is not wit. But to make true silver or gold is no engine, except only the philosopher's medicine. Wherefore such leasings as multipliers use, clerks reprove and utterly refuse. Such art of multiplying is to be reproved, but holy alchemy of right is to be loved, which treateth of a precious medicine, such as truly maketh gold and silver fine, whereof example for testimony is in a city of Calatoni. Which Raymond Lully, knight, men suppose, made in seven images the truth to disclose. Three were good silver, in shape like ladies bright. Every each of four were gold, and did a knight. In borders of their clothing letters like appear, signifying in sentence, as it showeth here. One. Of old horseshoes, saith said one. I was ire, now I am good silver, as good as ye desire. 2. I was, said another, iron fet from the mine, but now I am gold, pure, perfect, and fine. 3. Willem was I copper of an old red pan, now am I good silver, said the third woman. 
four. The fourth said, I was copper, grown in the filthy place. Now I am perfect gold made by God's grace. Five. The fifth said, I was silver, perfect through fine. Now I am perfect. Now am I perfect gold, excellent, better than the prime. Six. I was lead. I was a pipe of lead, well nigh two hundred years. And now to all men, good silver I appear. Seven. The seventh said, I lead am gold, made for a maestri. But truly my fellows are nearer to, thereto than I. This science beareth her name of a king, and called alchemist without leasing, a glorious prince of most noble mind. His, virt his noble virtues hope, hope help him this art to find. That's help. His noble virtues help him this art to find. He searched nature, he was noble clerk, he left extortion, then sought and found his work. King Hermes also, he did the same, being a clerk of excellent fame. In his quadripartite, made of astrology, of physic, and of this art of alchemy, and also of magic naturel. As of for sciences in nature passing all. And there he said that blessed is he that knoweth things truly as they be. Oops. Yep. That's because that was a that was wonderful. Not really sure how that happened. As of, let's see here. This science beareth her name of a king, called Ich Alchemist without leasing. A glorious prince of most noble mind, his noble virtues help him this art to find. He searched nature, he was noble clerk, he left extortion, then sought and found this work. King Hermes also, he did the same, being a clerk of excellent fame. In his quadripartite, made of astrology, of physic, and of this art of alchemy, and also of magic naturel, as of four sciences in nature passing all. And there he said that blessed is he that knoweth things truly as they be. And blessed is he that maketh due proof, for that is root and cunning and root. That is root of cunning and root. For by opinion is many a man deceived. This is a good a tricky rhythm. And blessed is he that maketh due proof, for that is root of cunning and root. For by opinion is many a man deceived which hereof little can an old proverb in a bushel of weaning is not found one handful of cunning with due proof and with discreet assay wise men may leer new things every day by cunning men know themselves and everything man is but a beast and worse without cunning but little favor hath every man to science whereof he little can, and little cunning maketh men proud and wild. Sufficient cunning maketh men full mild. Noble men now in manner have despite of them that have to cunning appetite, but noble kings in ancient days ordained, as old Octors says, that the seven sciences to learn and can should none but only a noble man, and at the least he should be so free, that he might study with liberty, 
wherefore old sages did them call the seven sciences liberal. For he that would lear them perfectly and well, in clear liberty he must dwell. From worldly works he must withdraw, that would learn but man's law. Much more the world he must forsake, which many sciences would overtake. And for that cause men may well see why cunning men despised thee. Why cunning men despised thee. Yet noble memory shall never cease of him which cunning doth increase. He which loveth cunning, justice, and grace is set aside in many a place. But who to court bringeth in with guile, profit, or present, he is the man that while. Wherefore this science, and many graces more, be lost, and be departed all ye fro. And furthermore, remember what I say. Sin calleth fast for his ending day. Covetous and cunning have discourse, discord by kind. Oh, let me just read that again. And furthermore, remember what I say. Sin calleth fast for his ending day. Covetous and cunning have discord by kind. Who lucre coveteth, this science shall not find. But he that loveth science for her own kind, he may purchase both for his blessed mind. Of this chapter more I need not teach, for here appeareth what men may it reach. That is to remember only the true, and he that is constant in mind to pursue, and is not ambitious to borrow hath no need, and can be patient, not hasty for to speed, and that in God he set fully his trust, and that in cunning be fixed all his lust, and with all this he lead a rightful life, falsehood subduing, support no sinful strife. Such men be apt the science to attain, the chapter following is of joy and pain. There ends, there ends chapter one of Thomas Norton's Ordinal of Alchemy. All right, that was great. <laughs>